Takže vítam u nás Sergeja Butenka. Welcome to Bratislava, Sergej. Check, check, check. Thank you. Dobrý večer. Mikrofón robote? No. Does it? One, two, three. Yeah, okay. More or less. Or just my voice. So, just fine. Here we go. Please. Here we go. Pajakli. Excuse me. How many people speak English? Oh, good. We don't even need Andre. <laughs> I'm just kidding. How many people speak Russian? Less. Nimnoshka. Chichut. It's it's really nice to be here. I uh, this is my first time and it's very beautiful. We have a lot to cover, so I'm just gonna dive right in. When I was nine years old, every single person in my family got sick. I was diagnosed with diabetes. My mom had heart problems. My sister had asthma. And my dad had arthritis and hyperthyroid. And so we went to the doctors and they all told us all the same thing. They said, take these drugs for the rest of your life and you'll never get better. <laughs> and so my mother said, no. <laughs> and she said, there's got to be a better way. Is there a better way? And they said, absolutely not. She still didn't give up. She started researching uh, disease on her own. And there she read, for example, that diabetes is incurable. Heart problems are incurable. Same for asthma and same for my father's. So, what does a Russian mother do? She got desperate. She noticed that some people on the street looked really healthy. And some people look not so healthy. How many people have observed this? <laughs> Raise your hand. Yeah? So she decided to ask the healthy people what they did to look so good. Začala sa pýtať tých zdravých ľudí, že čo robia na to, že sú zdraví. Now usually the healthy people were doing something active, they were running. Väčšinou tí zdraví ľudia robili niečo aktívne, behali. And my mom didn't know how to approach them. Ani nevedela, že ak ich zastaviť. <laughs> And she was also very Russian. A bola veľmi ruská. So she would run up to them, they're jogging. Vykala za nimi, oni jogovali. And she'd run up to them and she'd go, hello. <laughs> He has to do the accent, otherwise I can't. Okay, ready? Yeah. Hello. Hello. You look good. What do you do? How do I heal diabetes? And imagine what most people did. A spresať, čo väčšina ľudí urobila. <laughs> she wasn't getting anywhere, so she decided that maybe if she complimented them first, it would work better. Tak hľadala nový spôsob, že keď im dá kompliment na začiatku, že možno sa budú sa rozprávať. And amazingly it worked, she runs up. Takže to fungovalo, utekala za nimi. You looks amazing. Že vyzerať výborne. How? Why? Čo prečo? Ako? And then people would open up and start telling her about stuff. 
And just like that, we found out about raw food eating. A tak sme došli vlastne na jedenie surovej spravy. We met a lady, my mom met a lady in a bank line that told her that all we had to do was eat raw food. Takže moja mama stretla pani, ktorá jej povedala všetko, čo máte urobiť, je jesť surovú spravu. And so, about 20 years ago, we threw away all of our pots and pans. Takže pred 20 rokmi sme vyhodili všetky panvice a hrnce. Smash the microwave with a hammer. <laughs> and started eating like rabbits. <laughs> and amazingly it worked. My diabetes symptoms started going away. My sister, my mom, my father all felt better. And then the government started getting worried. A potom sa za, začala naša vláda byť nespokojná. Because in the US, if you feed your kids healthy food, they take you to jail. Pretože keď v Amerike dávate de- deťom zdravú stravu, tak pôjdete do basy. So our parents had to teach us to lie to the authorities. Takže rodičia nás učili, že pred oficiálnymi miestami musíme klamať. Usually a lady would come to the door, this happened many times. Tak Prišla nejaká dáma, vera, to sa stalo častejšie. And she'd say, kids, can I talk to you away from the parents? Detičky, môže sa s vami rozprávať mimo rodičov? What did you have for lunch today? Čo ste mali dneska na večeru? And the funny thing is, if I said McDonald's, she'd go away really fast. Keď som povedal, že McDonald's, tak hneď odišla. So, we lied to the authorities, ate raw food. Takže my sme klamali, jedli sme si súrovú stravu and felt better than ever. We started traveling around the entire world doing lectures. We published books on nutrition. And we told people rah, rah, rah. And just... Uh, For example, out of if if a hundred people showed up to a lecture and we told them to eat raw food, guess how many people would eat raw food? Guess. One. Please, I'm not I'm not that good. It was actually two. <laughs> So for some reason people all knew that they needed to eat healthy but few people did. Furthermore, after seven years on a very strict raw food diet, we noticed some things that were alarming. For example, my mom started gaining her weight back. My dad's hair started going gray. Uh, we got very tired in the afternoon, every afternoon. Uh, our teeth started to break down. And we thought, what's going on? Why did this work so well at first and now it's not working as well? And so today I'm not just going to tell you what you want to hear, but I'll tell you all about the different researches that we've conducted and what we're doing currently. So again, my mom took matters into her own hands and started researching what a good diet meant. She would contact people like David Wolf, Victoria Sklavinskas, all of the health food people we had met over the years. And she would ask them, what is the best diet for humans? And every single person said something different. Some people said, don't eat fruits. They turn to alcohol in the system and you all get drunk. 
Some people said, don't eat greens. They're all from the opium family and you all get high. <laughs> don't eat nuts. They cause brain cancer. Uh, what else? Don't eat sprouts, they're toxic. Uh, did I leave anything else out? <laughs> so finally we decided we were going to be breatharians. And breatharians, of course, they just go... <laughs> wow, I'm so full. <laughs> the deeper the breath, the more you eat. <laughs> But for breatharians, you need clean air. And at the time, we were living outside of Los Angeles. So we had to go on a breatharian fast. But that only lasted 30 seconds. <laughs> My point is that I don't think anybody knows what the best food is for humans. I think we humans are still learning what perfect diet is. And I think that the best way that I know what I need to eat is to test it on myself. Because I've been with myself the longest. So my mom started doing research about what the most nutritional food was. And she tried to really open her mind and look not just at raw food, but at french fries, McDonald's, everything. Because she thought maybe as raw foodists we became too dogmatic. She looked at what nutrients people need in their, uh, in their diet to be healthy. And she looked at what foods were the highest in nutrients. And uh, what, what foods do you think came up as most nutritious? In, in Slovak. Greens. How do you say greens? Shalati. Yeah. I have some interesting charts to discuss. Okay, so greens. Most nutritious food. Like, for example, we have uh, protein here on the right. And this is also what is recommended in the middle to get on a daily basis. And then on the, the right, we have a wild edible and we have kale, salat. By the way, all these charts are in the book. So, uh, for example, people say you cannot get protein from raw food. You have to get it from meat. But tryptophan, which is one of the essential amino acids, you need 240 milligrams per day. And lamb's quarters will get you 173. So not quite enough, but pretty close. Uh, then another mineral or protein is valine. 700 is what they recommend. Uh, 
Lamb's quarters will give you more than enough, 1,026. So the experts didn't know, but when she looked into the actual science, it was all there in front of her. What is this? <laughs> this is uh, our closest animal relatives. They, we share 99.4% of the same genes as chimpanzees. I can go into many reasons why, you know, how similar we are, but most people know. What my mom found fascinating was when she learned that wild chimpanzees eat a lot of greens. And unlike humans, they don't get diabetes, they don't get heart disease. They live a very natural diet, or they live a very healthy lifestyle and die of natural causes. Guess how many people die of natural causes? Less than 2%. So somebody is old and they die and then when they autopsy them they realize it was cancer, heart disease. And when I learned this statistic I realized my only goal, one of my biggest goals in life is to die of a natural cause. <laughs> So a wild chimpanzee diet looks like this. They eat 50% fruit, which everybody knows because every time you see a picture of a chimpanzee, it has a banana. And also, they eat 40% greens, which is kind of shocking. We never hear that chimpanzees eat so many greens. But my mama actually visited zoos and talked to the people that feed them. And they explained to her that in nature, fruit is ripe for a very short time. And a chimpanzee can eat lots of fruit. So if it ate only fruit, they would eat all the fruit and there'd be nothing left. But greens are even more abundant. And when you look at a jungle, it's mostly the color green. And so they eat, a high percentage of their diet is greens. Interestingly enough, one thing they like to do is take a piece of fruit and wrap it in a green leaf and then... I call that a gorilla wrap. Gorilovsky wrap. <laughs> so try that at home. You take a banana, salat, chomp. It's very good. It's, try it. And then the rest they eat uh, insects, sometimes they eat meat, uh, seeds, nuts, that kind of thing. So, wild diet of a chimpanzee, they don't get sick, die of natural causes. This is the diet of the standard American. Completely different colors. Mostly cooked rice, potato, bread, pasta. Mostly cooked rice, potato, bread, pasta. 
animal products. A little bit of vegetables, a little bit of fruit. And this tiny little sliver right here is the most nutritious food in the planet. And I used to say this is the standard American diet, but then I visited 47 countries. And so now I think it's the standard world diet. Interestingly enough, as raw foodists, our colors were also a little bit different. So a big majority of it was fruit. That part we got right. Uh, we also ate a lot of root vegetables, beets, carrots. And we also started eating lots of nuts, avocados, oils, and seeds. There are foods that we eat that fill us up and make us feel full. Bread, rice, pasta. As raw foodists, you start eating nuts and seeds to, to give you that same effect. But there's one key difference between bread and pasta and nuts. And that's fat content. Even though it's good fat, raw food, nuts and seeds, in the quantity that we eat is too much. And it causes also some minor health problems. It can cause them. And then we also started eating more greens. But we weren't eating nearly enough greens. So my mom decided to put us all, take us off the rabbit diet. And put us on the chimpanzee diet. <laughs> and so that meant to eat two big bunches of greens every single day. The first day, uh, she brought us each two, two bunches of greens and said, you're not leaving the house until you eat these greens. <laughs> and it's quite difficult to just, you know, they want to come back out. <laughs> My dad, who's like the, uh, the Russian man, said... We're not thinking about it right. We got to cram them in the blender and just pulverize them. And then hold our nose and just drink it really fast. <laughs> and that's essentially how green smoothies were born. It was, it was way too intense to drink just by itself, so we started adding fruit to it. And what the end result was, it was a fruit smoothie that tasted great but looked green. And it was still kind of an unpleasant color. But my sister found a solution for that. She turned off the light. <laughs> and our very first smoothie we drank together as a family in the dark. <laughs> that was when my mom created green smoothies. It was in 2004. So this year will be 10 years uh, reunion. Um, that was an easy way where we could start incorporating more greens into our diet. Toto bola veľmi 
By this point, we were so deficient in some of the minerals that we really needed one, two liters every single day. And because it was good, we started doing that every single day. And our health started improving it once again. So uh, my dad's actual, my, gri- no, my dad's gray hair started to change back, get its color back. Uh, our teeth uh, were not as sensitive. Uh, my mom's weight started going back down. So we really thought that this was um, kind of the right direction that we were moving. And since then we've, we've done a lot more research, we've published more books on green smoothies and it's kind of taken the world by storm. I have some exciting new, uh, news to share with you. For the first time, you're the first group to hear about it. How many people do sports? Yeah? So all of last year, I was working on a secret project. I took 10 extreme athletes and I put them on green smoothies. I had five crazy runners. They'd run 160 kilometers in one day. And then I had five athletes that did CrossFit. They were doing Stanga, you know, also crazy. I decided that I wanted to put them on a healthy regime just to see what would happen. So I raised money and I put them through vigorous tests. I tested for 56 markers, vitamin C, cholesterol, everything. Uh, oxidative stress, free radicals, as well as endurance, how, how healthy they were. And I found, I found that they were really healthy as people. Then I asked them not to change anything about their lifestyle, but add a liter of smoothie that I made for them. I, I wanted only one factor to change, which was the smoothie. And then uh, we did that for six weeks and I did all those same tests again. People were very skeptical. They thought, well, we're not going long enough. This isn't enough of a change. But amazingly, all of them improved. What I discovered is that athletes create more free radicals than normal people. And free radicals, we know, are unpaired electrons that try and bond to healthy cells and they create because athletes use their bodies they start uh, putting more wear and more damage on their bodies so can age faster and we interestingly found that greens can absolutely negate all of that. All the athletes experienced a huge reduction in inflammation. Huge boost in vitamins and minerals. And a reduction in uh, free radicals. In only six weeks. And all of them craved healthier foods after the smoothies. So that's another great benefit of the smoothies. 
Remember I asked how many people became rock for hearing me speak? With smoothies it's a different story because it's easier to add to your diet than take away. We find that when people start drinking them regularly every single day they crave healthier foods naturally. I'm learning too. <laughs> These uh, last story about the athletes, and we'll move on. So these guys and girls, uh, they were all different ages. And they were, um, they would run 100, 160 kilometers in these races. Before the smoothies, for two weeks after a race, they were like... Couldn't walk, especially if there were stairs, just couldn't do it. After the experiment, they started calling me on day three after the race. And they would say, Sergey, what did you do to me? I'm not sore. I can still run. I have the feeling that I can just keep running forever. One of my friends, uh, he ran a big long race. Slept. Ran another big long race. Slept. What is slept? Spal. <laughs> then ran another one and another one. So he ran four races back to back. Which he'd never done that before. And then finally he decided, I'm a little tired. <laughs> So the smoothies, they really are amazing. It's just the easiest way to bring health into your diet. And I think we'll all agree on that, yes? <laughs> My line of work is really not smoothies. It's, uh, it's a different direction in health. It's, um, it's wild edibles. Yeah. And uh, so the bulk of what I want to talk to you guys about today is uh, wild edibles. How are we feeling? Are we, are we tired? Can we just jump right in or do you want a five minute break? Okay, just continue. Are you okay? okay. Um, not yet. Okay, so, my mother, if you haven't noticed, is very extreme. First it was raw food. Then she decided she wanted to start hiking. And she, she didn't want to just go on a little hike. She wanted to hike almost uh, 5,000 kilometers. This is the west coast of the United States. And on the west coast there's a trail, it's called the Pacific Crest Trail. We woke up one morning and she told us we're going to hike from Mexico to Canada. <laughs> And we're going to do it on raw food. 
And also, shoes are not natural, so we're going to do it barefoot. <laughs> I was 13 years old. How much experience did I have with hiking prior to this trip? <laughs> About that much. <laughs> this is our basset hound. We decided we would uh, take a small hike for three days to see how we, w how we felt. To see if we could hike for six months. Uh, my dad decided that expensive backpacks, well, there was no need, so he got one of these. Uh, I think it was a duffel bag from the Vietnam War. <laughs> We also brought a very heavy canvas tent and a bunch of other stuff we didn't need. And so this weighed about uh, 80 kilos. <laughs> At the end of the day, he looked like this. <laughs> The trail would go up on, on mountains and then it would go down and it would go back up. When he hiked to the tops of mountains, he would throw the backpack down the hill. And this was my general mood. So at the end of the trip, when my mom said, we're still going to do the hike, my dad started crying and I was pretty close to crying too. In Russia there's a saying, the man is the head of the family, but the woman is the neck. Yeah? You have that here too. And whichever the way the neck moves, that's where the head has to go. So, we geared up a little bit better, and we started hiking. Now, I said we did it barefoot, but we pretty soon realized that that was impossible. So, instead, we did it in sandals. <laughs> Mind you, it's called the Pacific Crest Trail for a reason. Crest is like the top of a mountain. Home. So this trail goes in all the lowest places and all the highest places. And so sometimes we had to walk through snow in those. Man, as I'm, as I'm talking, I'm thinking maybe the state should have taken us away from our parents. <laughs> That's black Russian humor. We were still very inexperienced. And for six months, you can't pack all the food on your back. So we read a book about how to, to hike a trail and you pack food. We had 26 boxes that we made and then we'd mail them to ourselves. Boxes of food. Yeah. So our friend would uh, would mail us boxes every two weeks, and we'd hike through a po uh, like a, a small town and pick up the food. But we had no idea how much food five hungry hikers could eat. I should also mention that 
My uncle sent our cousin to live with us for one year. To give her the full American experience. <laughs> so what do we do? We take her into the woods for six months. <laughs> so within two weeks we started running out of food. We would pick up our box, we'd hike, and we would still have three days to go, and we had no food. And it's not very fun to fast and hike at the same time. So we had a big decision. We either had to stop hiking or we had to think of something. And we didn't have very much money at the time, so we couldn't buy more food. You know, food is expensive, and if you, um, you know, go out and try and buy six months worth of food, you need thousands of dollars. So we had a family meeting, and we, we thought, what are we going to do? What should we do? And it's funny how the universe always provides the answer. All you have to do is ask. I've learned this over and over in life. If you have a question and nobody can answer it, just ask and then just watch. Within a few hours of asking, we saw a man on the trail and he was hiking and, and collecting stuff. We'd been on the trail for three weeks, didn't see anything like this. And he would just put stuff in bags, put stuff in his backpack. And so he sa we said, what are you doing? And he said, the, the forest is full of food. You just have to know where to look. And uh, he also pointed out a few things. This is edible, this is edible, this is not edible. And we got our answer. So we started collecting food on the trail. Everything from mushrooms to wild greens. And as a result, we were able to hike all the way to Canada. Predominantly on raw food wearing sandals. If you look very carefully, actually, right here you can see that that's the Canadian border. It's just no trees as far as the eye can see in a straight line. No trees? No trees. They cut the trees. This is very different to what people are recommended to do. Supposedly, you're not supposed to be able to survive when you do this. Uh, let me rephrase. If you do this, uh, you're, the, the National Hiking Association says you cannot hike while eating healthy food. Because you burn so many calories that if you don't replenish them, you die. So they recommend that everybody brings half a kilo of M&Ms for every single day. <laughs> because they have lots of calories and every time you roll over in your sleep you're supposed to... <laughs> uh, because on the trail sometimes you burn up to 8,000 calories per day. That's like an Olympic runner or swimmer. Yet, our experience was not only did we 
not die. <laughs> we felt better than ever before. And this, mind you, this is way before green smoothies. It's funny, sometimes you start doing stuff and it takes you years to realize what is really going on. Because earlier I told you about how nutritious greens are, right? When we were hiking, most of our diet was greens. Okay, this is a test. <laughs> And you can't cheat. <laughs> this is why I do what I do. Because we're starting to lose our connection with nature. <laughs> And especially for those of us in Europe, uh, I think it's especially painful because all of our grandparents they knew this stuff my grandmother you know Russian grandmother she would say you can eat this you can eat this you can eat this and I would say no grandmother I want to eat from a can I would actually say that's, that's knowledge from the Titanic This is new and improved food. But that's the food that's causing the problem. And yet new generations, you put them in the forest and they get scared. And uh, we're starting to lose that knowledge of what is food, what is medicine, what should I not eat. But we're gaining other knowledge. And uh, I want to test you on it. So when I point to stuff, you tell me if you know it. You just yell out all together. What is this? Twitter, yeah. How about this? Good. MySpace, yeah. How about this? Lacoste. 100%. <laughs> Let's come over here. 100%. Doop. Okay, good. Oak. This is fur, like a Christmas tree, yeah? Lichka? Yerlichka. Yolichka. Yolichka. How about this? Nope. Kislichka. Good. How about that? Who keeps saying that? Raise your hand. I keep hearing a, a lady's voice. Over here, raise your hand really tall. Everybody else look at her and think, friend. <laughs> Drew. <laughs> How about this? Mm. Maple? Ma maple? Yeah. This? Shishka, good. <laughs> Tree. Deriva. There's a trick. This, this, and this is all the same. Two more. Lipa. Good. Yeah. Okay, so good, but mm, 50%. Yeah? In America, it's even less. So, why? Why should we learn about wild edibles? <laughs> I made a big list. And I want to tell you about that list because I think it's important. The most important reason is because it's free food. 
When we talk about eating greens, my mom says two bunches every single day. I travel and I observe. In Australia, two bunches of greens cost 16 euros. In Sweden, two bunches of greens, 32 euros. I haven't been to the store here yet, but expensive, right? So does that mean that only rich people get to be healthy? I don't think so. And so a really good solution that I found personally is to eat for free. I also think that wild food is healthier than food bought at the store. For one, wild foods, wild edibles, have longer roots. They have wider roots. So those roots can draw out more minerals and more vitamins from the soil. Those roots go deeper, they go wider, and they have more to pull from. They also grow in soil that is less depleted. You know, when a, when a farmer farms in the same soil year after year after year, the food is just not as good. And especially now when they're farming the same crop, peas, 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 tomato, 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 it's not as good. Nature, it works in very mysterious ways. And we humans, we go in and we know, I'm just going to grow only one thing here, it'll be fine. And it doesn't work, no matter how much we think that it will. How many people have noticed this? In the summer, when the grass gets brown, the dandelions will always be green. How many notice? Is that because somebody runs in Bratislava and waters only the dandelions? <laughs> Why? It had deeper roots, right? Deeper roots. That's part of the explanation. The other part is that they're genetically stronger. Now, wild edibles are the way that nature intended them. Did you know that a dandelion is the origin of lettuce? Salat. Le all lettuces came from dandelion. Today, what you buy in the store looks nothing like a dandelion. Because what humans decided is, this is too bitter, doesn't taste good. So they found a variety that was sweeter. And they would grow that variety. And then they found the sweeter variety and then grow that one again. And they did this over and over and over. And as a result, we have really tasty, juicy lettuce. But it's nowhere near as nutritious. So, wild plants are genetically stronger. 
Uh, they also boost our immune system. Okay, the next point is more food diversity. By the way, is this interesting? Yeah? Anybody falling asleep? Because if, if you start falling asleep, we're going to do prisyatka. Okay, so we're advanced humans. We have iPods, we had iPhones. We have airplanes. But we are eating the least amount of food ever right now. We think we eat lots of different cuisines, Italian, French. But it's made out of the same 15 ingredients. Wheat. Rice. Uh, meat. Cheese. Sugar. Corn. Kukuritsa. I read a book once. It was called... Uh, a very long name. It was Native American Ethnobotany. Good luck. Indianska <laughs> ethno... Batanya. Botanica. Botanica, yeah. And there the author looked into what Indians ate. Indians used to eat over 2,000 different plants every single year. The current statistics for how much food we eat every year is about two to 300. So the amount of diversity that we eat has dropped. And as a result, I think that's another reason why we're feeling so sick. Different foods are different in nutrition, right? Some foods have a lot of iron, other foods have a lot of something else, and all foods are different. So my logic thinks that if I eat as many different foods as I can, I'm more likely to get all of the nutrients. And so, another goal that I have is to eat over 2,000 plants every single year. There's also a lot of research uh, that shows that the reason allergies are on the rise is because we keep eating the same food over and over again. And nature doesn't want you to do that. What's the proof? Seasons. Because wheat is only in season for when it's in season. Wheat, like bread. Pšenica. Uh, uh, anything. Any, nuts are only in season a short amount of time. Greens. Like, I'll tell you personally, in my yard, it's very wild and lots of weeds that are edible. In May, I have three types of wild edibles. Then they go out of season, I have different wild edibles. In the fall, I have different wild edibles. So nature is, is telling me, eat different food. Does that make sense? But when you have a truck that brings you the same apples from a different place in the world when they're in season, it's unnatural. Okay, local food. That's another great thing. Prices of gas keep rising. That rises the price of food. Tým, že, uh, 
Uh, when I was writing my book on wild edibles, I learned that the average banana travels 35,000 kilometers to get to you. Uh, sorry, 3,500 kilometers. That's a lot of energy being exerted. When I finished university, I moved to Maui. Hawaii, yeah. There they grow the, the world's best pineapples. I couldn't buy a pineapple from Hawaii in Hawaii. They take all the ananases and they ship them to you elsewhere. When I buy a, a, a pineapple in Hawaii, it's from Costa Rica. <laughs> How does that make sense? How, How can that possibly be more efficient? So, wild edibles give us the opportunity to eat food that grows as local as possible. And I believe that is a huge thing to do that's positive for the environment. And the only energy expended is my own, and I call that exercise. It's a good thing. Also, wild edibles prepare you for hard times. Uh, for example, if the power ever went out, what would you do? In any major city, all the food and the water would be gone in three days. Uh, uh, they, like for example, when the East Coast in the United States had a hurricane two years ago, in, in three days in New York City there was no food and water. And people were literally starving. What would you do? I think that knowing your plants before you go into that hard time is a good idea. Because when you're in a panic, it's hard to learn. <laughs> Wild edibles also force you to spend more time in nature. And we need this. Maybe this is the most important thing I have to say to you. Technology is exciting. iPads, iPods, ooh. But the statistics are very not in that favor. Did you know that if you look at an iPad, if you drive in a car, if you live in a city, your heart rate and cholesterol go up? Your brain works faster all the time than it's supposed to. And you're just getting all sorts of pollution and, and stress that you shouldn't be. Whereas if you're in nature, it's the opposite. Without even eating anything, just looking at a river or a mountain, your heart rate and cholesterol drops. Cholesterol and, and heart rate. They do tests, they wire your brain up. And they give it stimuli in the city and the activity is crazy. And then they put that same person in nature and they're like... Last year I visited Eastern Siberia, I'll tell you this. And we flew into Yakutsk. 
We got special permission to film a, a village where they had the most over 100 year olds in all of Russia. So they had um, several villages and they had just dozens of them. And we wanted to go see, we got special permission from the Russian government to go and film. We're currently working on a project to figure out why is it that some people live a really long time. And these people, they were 105, 110. There was one guy that was 115. And you, I thought that they would just be like this, you know, just laying. But these people, they're, they're taking care of themselves. They're actually working in the garden. I asked one lady, she was 106, if she lived with her son, who was 80. She lived with her son. I asked her, uh, so lady was 105, I asked if she lived with her 80-year-old son. She said, no, he lives with me. <laughs> and you wouldn't believe it, her 80-year-old son looked like he was 45. And his 50-year-old daughter was hot. <laughs> She didn't look a day over 30. So we, you know, we're going to unleash another movie some, at some point talking about this. But what I'm getting at is that one of the things they do there is they live in nature. Many of them don't have electricity. They don't have cell phones. In fact, I was telling Andre that if you didn't, if they didn't have cars, you wouldn't know it's the 21st century. And you know what? Being there for me was amazing. It was so restful. You don't realize what real quiet is until you're there. And it was so quiet, it was loud, if, you, if that makes sense. Where you just don't hear anything. And, it, and if you hear a bird, ah, really far away, it's like, ah. So working with plants, I, I spend more time in nature. I get fresh air, I get sunlight, I get exercise. I start to relax, I feel less stressed. And it also improves my memory because I'm learning what I can and cannot eat. How many people have children? If you have children, you have to read the book uh, Last Child in the Woods. Because in this book, he talks about how important it is for, na uh, for children to spend time in nature. The average child watches 40 t uh, hours of television or computer per week. And spends less than two hours a week in nature. And it's affecting them on every level, spiritual, psychological, physical. And I, I realize that maybe I'm kind of the last generation that spent time in nature as a child. Because I observe kids all the time. I like to watch. And kids today, they don't act the way that I acted when I was young. When I was young, my mother said, when the street lights go on, you better be home. 
Mám aby keď si povedal, že keď sa zapnú svetla na ulici, tak ty musíš byť doma. And you couldn't get us inside. A my sme nechceli ísť dnu. But today, like my, my brother's kids, you can't get them outside. And that's another reason that I'm doing what I'm doing. So now you know all the benefits. And why is it that more people don't eat wild edibles? Any clue? Because they don't know the benefits. That's a good, that's a very good point. The f- they fear, right? <laughs> Somewhere in, in our education we were taught it's dangerous. Uh, this probably happened when we were little, it started happening. Because when we're little, we explore stuff with all of our senses. And if you go to a park, you can sometimes see this happening. A little kid is walking around and it's looking and it's... Life is mysterious because it doesn't have names for everything yet. It doesn't think, oh, it's just a tree. It sees this massive thing and there's bugs and then there's moss. Moss, like a moch. Yeah. And so it, it's, the child sees a city of different things. But, but as adults, we've learned, oh, that's a tree. So the child finds a plant. And it looks interesting, so it starts touching the plant. It smells the plant. It shakes the plant and listens. And then it's about to do this. And mother or dad runs up and says, Don't eat that, that's poisonous. And it's not poisonous most of the time. But the parents don't know, and so they say, Don't eat that, they try and scare it away from being stupid. And this is probably not a bad way to live, but it's, un, it's planting fear in the kid's mind. And in reality, plants are not dangerous. Because, you know, there's no chance of you walking down the street like this and a plant just jumping in. In order to harm yourself, you have to pick a plant and eat it. And if you don't think you have what it takes to just put random stuff in your mouth, if you don't think that you, if you can't contain yourself from just eating everything in sight, If you can't uh, stop yourself from eating everything in sight, then maybe foraging for wild edibles is not a good thing for you to do. <laughs> But if, if you think that you can just look at stuff and study it and approach it cautiously, then it's a good idea. We're going to get into some really technical stuff and we'll take a little break here in a second. But before I do, I just have three simple rules that keep you safe. 
základné pravidlá, ktoré vás nechajú na bezpečnej strane? Rule number one. Pravidlo číslo jedna. Don't eat something if you don't know what it is. I have a rap song I wrote on YouTube. Don't eat something if you don't know what it is. <laughs> it's common sense, right? But you'll be surprised how many people email me and they say, I went hiking and I ate a bunch of stuff. Is that okay? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Some people said, I, I went with my child and I fed him stuff, and here's a picture of it. Can you tell us if it's edible? <laughs> and I'm sitting by the computer going, <laughs> So don't eat something if you don't know what it is. <laughs> Rule number two. <laughs> Eat all new foods in small amounts. Everybody is a little bit different. So if I say a dandelion is perfectly edible, you might eat it and it might not feel very good in your body. So it's a good idea to eat even edible things in small amounts. This is more precautionary, but it's a good idea. And then lastly, the third rule, the, the last rule, three, is don't mix too many plants. We humans, we like, when we find out something is good, we want to do as much as possible. So the tendency is, Sergei says this is good. So I'm going to do this and this and this and this. And then if you have a reaction and you have lots of ingredients, you won't know what caused it. So when you start out as new foragers, for the first six months, you just do one, maybe two things in a smoothie. And that way you slowly test it on your body and you make sure that it's okay. Make sense? Okay. Let's take a five minute break and then we'll look at some plants. And he said, uh, what are you working on? And I said, I have wild edible cards. So I, I sent him a deck. And he said, do you mind if I translate them? And I said, I don't mind. And he made a much better card deck than me. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Okay. And so... Uh, I, I, I endorse this deck. So, thank you. It's nice because you can just put it in your pocket and it uh, has all the information on there. And also, when you're gambling with your friends, you're bored, you're bored because you're waiting for them to move and you're studying. And the idea is also that you can test yourself. You can read the back which doesn't have the name of the plant and say, did I get it right? <laughs> Uh, 
nejaké vlastnosti to má, tak môžete uhádnuť, aká karta to je. Takže hravoporov sa naučíme cez v podstate švindlovanie, sa naučíme tie karty, teda tie rastlina. OK, here we go. OK, pokračujem. People ask me often, how realistic is it to harvest food from nature? Ľudia sa ma často pýtajú, že aké rastliny sú dobré. I got together with two friends and in three hours we collected all this food. We have wild spinach here, wild lettuce, wild peas, uh, we also have cattails, more, more cattails, Variety right here. This is proof. So, a couple minutes ago, I talked about how important it is to get a lot of food into your diet. When you learn one wild edible plant, you get way more food into your diet. For example, all grasses are edible. There are over 10,000 varieties of grass. So if today you learn nothing else but grass is edible, you have 10,000 new things to eat. Because every variety of grass is going to be different in different nutrition. If your grass is organic, you can actually mow it with your lawnmower or your some scissors. And you can throw it in the blender or the juicer and make wheatgrass. And then it's free. So somebody just came up to me and said, I'm bored of smoothies, I only do spinach. Within green smoothies there are some rules. The first rule is, if you don't make it tasty, you won't drink it. So some people say, how many greens do I put in? As many as you can, but not too many so that you don't drink it. Uh, people say greens are good, fruit is bad, so I'm just going to put greens in there. And then days, weeks go by and they don't want to drink the smoothie. So... The generic recipe that my mom came up with is 60% by volume fruits, 40% greens. So that's a starting point. If you think that's too sweet, add a little bit more greens. If, if that's not sweet enough for you, add more fruits. Rule number two for smoothies is you have to alternate your greens. When I go and do talks, I often use spinach, mango, banana. Not because that's my favorite smoothie, but because those ingredients are everywhere. And what happens way too often is that people only drink that smoothie. People said, Sergei's smoothie is amazing, that's, that's it, that's what I'm going to do. And it's always the same email three months later. I've been drinking your green smoothies, everything was great, and now I feel like I want to kill myself. I cannot drink that same smoothie again. 
Už nemôžem piť to isté smutné viac. I don't feel good. Už sa necítim dobre. I have trouble digesting it. Mám problémy s trávením. And I say, you never thought you want to, to change the recipe? Um, I, I said, uh, you never wanted to change the recipe? Why? Your recipe was good. All greens are, are toxic in small amounts. In small amounts, these toxins are very good for you. For example, in apple seeds, there's arsenic. Napríklad v semenkách jablok je arzen. Too much arsenic kills people. Príšlo arzen ľudí zabíja. Small dose of arsenic blows up cancer cells. Malé množstvo arzenu zničí rakovinové bunky. And it doesn't harm nor healthy cells. A nepoškodí zdravé bunky. So nature doesn't want you to eat the same foods every single day. Takže príroda nechce od nás, aby sme jedli to isté jedlo stále do toho. Again, if we had seasons, you couldn't eat spinach every single day. You would. Can? You cannot. You cannot. Because if it was, if we lived close to the land, we would eat it while it's in season. Then we'd eat something else. This is another reason why wild edibles are important. They will make your smoothies better and more enjoyable. So make them tasty. And please, please, please change your greens. Because you don't want those uh, toxic substances to accumulate to an unhealthy degree. And even if you don't do wild edibles, when you're at the store, look at all the greens. Špinát, salát. Špinát, salát. Basil. Basil. Uh, dill. Kopor. Um, Sildide, celery. Zelar. There's, there's at least uh, 23 different things you can you make a smoothie from at the store. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I've had many wild edible teachers over the years. My favorite one, her name is Karen. I said, Karen, how do I learn new plants? Because there's thousands of different plants. And I want to know all of them. She says, actually, there's not that many plant families. And if you spend time with a plant and get to know it, you'll know it for the rest of your life. See, wild edibles also make you slow down. Because you really have to look at plants and study them. But it's not rocket science. Everybody can do it. And so tomorrow we're going to go on a walk. And that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to be touching plants, studying them for you to remember. Uh, but it's very limited space because I don't I can't handle a big group like this. I'm gonna make sure that everybody, you know, doesn't eat the wrong thing and I wanna point out certain things. So for those of you who can't make it to tomorrow, let's let's study some plants today. So like I just said, all plants have very unique identifying characteristics. And if you learn to recognize them, they will keep you safe. Furthermore, when you learn to look at a plant and, and know it, uh, you'll be able to identify plants within that family. 
budete schopni identifikovať rastlinu v rámci z tej uh, rodiny rastlín druhov. This is called developing your search image. Toto je, uh, toto sa nazýva rozvíjanie vašho spoznávacie schopnosti. So in our brains there's a folder. Našom mozgu je súbor. And every time we come into contact with the same object, more information is put into the folder. The first time you saw a banana, you had no idea what it was. Somebody told you it was edible. That information went into the folder. Then you looked at it again. You saw that it was yellow. Information went into the folder. Every time you came in contact, you got more information. Now I can tell you this is an orange. You'll know I'm lying because your folder is full of information. And at a very basic level, that's exactly what we're going to do about plants. So I'd like for the remainder of this talk just to look at plants and talk about how to identify them and what they're good for and how to use them. I had a realization the other day when I was uh, coming here. And the realization is the naming of plants. Uh, realization? The realiza- the, what I learned, what I understood for myself is about the naming of plants. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Because we name them just to help us. So all plants have a common name and a scientific name. The scientific name is the same in any country. The common name is different in every country. So miners lettuce in English. That's a friendly name. People are it's easy to learn that name, but it's difficult because it's different in every country. So I can't really use those names and, and teach people because they get confused. But a scientific name is hard to pronounce and scary. Cleatonia perfoliata. Nobody remembers those. So that doesn't work either. So I realized that it doesn't matter what they're called. As long as we learn how to identify them. So this plant I call miner's lettuce. In Porto Laxini. Good. It has disc-like leaves. And it has a stem that goes right through the middle of the leaf. That's really good information. That goes into the folder. If you look at how the plant grows, it grows from one root and it spreads out across the ground. It also has white flowers at the top. And the, smo- the stem is very smooth. That's all you need to know to identify this plant. It's one of the most delicious plants I know. It's very tasty and it doesn't have a strong green taste. It also has the most vitamin C out of anything else I know. Uh, one cup has more than 90 milligrams. That's a lot. And of course, vitamin C is an antioxidant. Fight, fights free radicals. 
If you're an athlete, you need vitamin C. I'll tell you a little story from my life. I went to the world's most, the biggest health expo. Uh, sorry? The world's biggest health show. And there was lots and lots of booths of people selling supplements. And I was just there with my books. And my mom and dad were also there. And so this one guy in particular, everybody was walking around and selling supplements to everybody else. And one guy in particular found me and said, you need this product. Nobody these days has enough antioxidants and this product gives it to you. And I said, no, I don't want it. I don't believe in, in supplements. Fresh food is best. He said, that's good, but your food is depleted of nutrition. And he would not leave me alone. So finally he said, uh, I want to prove it to you. I want to give you an antioxidant test at my booth. And if you come up low, then you have to try my product. And he wouldn't leave me alone, so I agree. The antioxidant tests from zero to 50,000, and the more you have, the better off you are. So this guy tested me and I had 80,000. It was literally off his chart. My dad and mom also got tested also off the chart. Then the guy looked at me and said, okay, what do you do? <laughs> I don't take supplements. These are my supplements. So vitamin C will put you, give you a high, a big advantage for antioxidants. Uh, this plant is a very early spring plant. April, May, so we probably won't see it tomorrow, but it's a good one to know. How about this one? Sheep sorrel. Okay. Shavin in Russian. All sorrels are very good for the skin. They have this quality where they tighten skin. If your skin gets cut or if you get an insect bite, you put sorrel on, it heals it. If you have eczema or other skin problems, you make sorrel smoothie. In New Zealand, a friend of mine had very bad eczema. I told him about this plant and three times a week he would make a smoothie for his skin. And he would take what he called green baths where he would just pour it over him. Baths. Showers. His neighbors thought he was nuts. Neighbors thought he was just crazy. After three weeks, no eczema. No pimples. And his wrinkles started going away. <laughs> and so after his wrinkles started going away, that's when more green ladies started turning up in the, in the neighborhood. <laughs> Again, this plant is very easy to identify. It has oval leaves. And it has two little 
leaflets that make it look like a sword or like a fish. It also has flowers that turn red. And it's sour to the taste. Why do we have five senses? To keep us safe. I think we rely too much on just sight these days. Our computer world is very uh, two-dimensional. It's just, we don't smell it. We, we just hear it and we see it. And our senses need to be used in order to keep us safe. So a lot of what we do tomorrow is, is learning how to go back to childhood. How to safely explore with all of our senses. So if we see something that looks like a fish, has red flowers and tastes a little bit sour, it's sorrel. And it's in the Griechka or Buckwheat family. Pohanka. Rich in iron. So it's really good for women, especially women that are pregnant or breastfeeding. It cleanses the system of heavy metals. All people need that. Everyone who lives in a city. There's a doctor in the US, he conducted a study. He took kids from the city and tested them for uh, chemicals and heavy metals. <laughs> Even though they, uh, they didn't do anything super toxic, just by living in the city, they had lots of pesticides. <laughs> lots of heavy metals. So he put them on uh, a green diet. Pesticides and heavy metals levels went down. He took them off the diet. Pesticides and chemicals went up. He put them on the diet. They went down again. So this stuff actually cleanses your body. Also, the seeds are edible. And they're kind of like linseed, like flax seeds. They're really good for your heart, rich in omega 3s. Salsify. This is my favorite wild edible. People say, what is your favorite wild edible? It's this. It's nice because it comes in two colors. Purple and yellow. And it's the only dandelion relative that's not bitter. So it has all the same benefits of dandelion, but dandelions are bitter. This one is not. It has a milky white stem. That milk that's in dandelions and salsify is really good for cleansing inner organs. Dissolves kidney stones and uh, gallbladder stones. Uh, the flower is very edible, very tasty. You just take it off the plant. It tastes incredible. Every tender part of this plant is edible. Salads, smoothies, sandwiches. Tomorrow we'll also learn about the tender parts of plants. But I want to give you a little summary if you don't make it. 
Tender parts of plants are called Mary stems. Krenke časti rastlín sa nás nazývajú Mary. Mary stem. Mary stem. And that basically just means the growing part of the plant. To znamená, že, to znamená, že rast, rastú v, v skupine. Growing parts of plants are usually light in color. So the growing parts of the plant are usually lighter in color. They're flexible. Sú flexibilné. Why does this why is this important? Prečo je to tak dôležité? Because the growing parts of plants are more nutritious. Pretože rastúce časti rastlín sú viac nutričné. The plant needs to put more nutrition in those parts because it's growing. Rastná zásobuje tieto časti rastlín viac, pretože potrebujú rásť. The cells are expanding, it needs more nourishment. Bunky sa zväčšujú, rozdeľujú a potrebujú veľa, veľa výživy. And it's way more tasty. A je to oveľa viac chutnejšie. Okay, so salsify contains Okay, kozebrada prolista obsahuje. Inulin, it's good for diabetics. Inzulin je dobrý pre cukrúkarov. All um, dandelion fa- family is really good for diabetes. A všetky príbuzné dan- pupavy majú a sú dobré na cukrovku. Vitamins A, B and C. Vitamin A, C, D, E. Calcium, protein. Pávnik, protein. Very taste. Veľmi chutná. Wild mustard. Bielka horčica. Okay, so some plants are easier to identify by sight. Niektoré rastliny je jednoduchšie identifikovať uh, na pohľad. Some plants are very easy to identify by taste. Niektoré je jednoduchšie identifikovať podľa chuti. Some plants are easiest to identify by scent. Niektoré sú jednoduchšie uh, identifikovať na základe vôni. All wild mustard smell like mustard. Všetky druhé horčice uh, voniajú ako divoká horčica. They all smell spicy. Uh, voniajú, uh, majú štipavú. The mustard family is huge. Rodina horčicových je obrovská. It's the third biggest family. Je to tretia najväčšia rodina. This includes things like cabbage. Toto obsahuje zahrnuje veci ako, ako kapusta. Uh, broccoli. Brokolica. Kale. 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 Yeah. It's like a dark green... Lettuce? Kale. Okay. Yeah. It's well known here. Uh, vitamins A, B, C, E. Vitamin A, B, C, E. K, which is really good for the eyesight. K, čo je veľmi dobré pre očný zrak. Protein, calcium, copper. Protein, calcium, uh, draslí, sulfur, manga, vláknium. One of my best friends, another forager teacher of, of mine, says that wild mustard is the most nutritious plant he knows. Again, I, I just can't get over the fact how awesome plants are. A supplement company would love to bottle this and sell it to you spoločnosti, ktoré chcú vám predávať rôzne doplnky stravy. But they can't. A nemôžu, lebo proste nemajú argumentu, čo základňu. Because their profit margin is not high enough. Pretože ich zisk nie je dostočne vysoký. Because wild plants grow one here, one there, one there. Dioké rastú rastný, rastú všade. And it costs way too much to harvest it. A nemôžu si účtovať na za to, aby ich mohli trhať. Je zle, zle, zle to hovoríš. Všetko. Veľké spoločnosti sa im neoplatí toto robiť, aj keby chceli, lebo za prvé je to veľmi ťažké to pozbierať a za druhé nemôže na tom zarobiť, lebo každý si to môže sám pozbierať. Ano. Takže sú to But you yourself can go out and have it for free. Stačí ju zgoľná a odtrhnúť aj to za zároveň. And that's an amazing thing. To je úžasné. While we're on the subject of mustards, here's another one. Peňažšie gloľný. These ones have seed pods that are round. Majú uh, semenné struky na stonke. Uh, long, smooth stem. Uh, mladé, krehké stonky. The greens are quite different from the last plant. Uh, Zelenie je uh, troška rozdielna od uh, 
But if you crush up the leaves, they smell spicy like mustard. So it looks nothing like the last plant, but it's still wild mustard, it still has that smell. One more example. Here's another mustard. There's a penny crest, which we just talked about. Uh, yes, uh, shepherd's purse. To je... So we have... We have shepherd's purse and penny crest. Máme kapsičku pastierskú a... Shepherd's purse and penny crest. Penny crest, penny shibon. Yeah, we have it right yeah. here. Penny shibon. Uh, so, it doesn't matter, they're both mustards, they're both edible. Obidve sú z hočice dve rodiny a sú obidve jedlé. You crush up the leaves, they smell just like spicy. Keď rozdrtíte list, vonia je už štiplávok. Uh, put them in salads, put them in sandwiches, put them in soups. You can throw them in your green smoothies, but you have to ta- uh, make savory green smoothies. Because if you make a sweet smoothie and put mustard in there, it's, it's not very tasty. But it's good to make not sweet smoothies from time to time. Where you take tomatoes, bell pepper, avocado. And it's more of a, a soup than a smoothie. Uh, both these seed pods are also very tasty and I use them in salads for texture. Just curious, is this interesting? Yeah, raise your hand if it's interesting. Raise your hand if it's not interesting. I dare you. <laughs> How about this one? Anybody know this? Yes, yes. Raise your hand. What is it? Onion, they said. Onion, yes. Everybody else, uh, raise your hand who said that. No, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Onion, yeah. Everybody else, this gentleman right here is a good friend to have in Bratislava. I'd be friends with him. Just like mustards, all wild onions smell like onion. So the onions are part of the lily family. There are not edible lilies. But all onions smell like onions. That's so easy. You break the leaf, give it a sniff, and then you know if it's edible or not. Rich in iron, calcium, folate. Magnesium, potassium, vitamins A and C. I'll also talk about roots really quick. I personally don't eat too many roots. Especially not when I harvest wild edibles. I feel like flowers and greens are nature's gift to us. If I take the flowers and the leaves, I leave the roots intact. They can grow new flowers and new leaves. They're easier to eat. They're more nutritious. And also, if I'm educating all of you guys about wild edibles and we go and all rip all the roots out, we can severely impact the ecology. But if we go and we harvest flowers and leaves, we can actually make it more abundant. 
pokiaľ však budeme trhať len kvety a listy, tak nerobíme takú škodu. So, you know, that's kind of the direction. I treat wild edibles like my garden. Takže ja používam tieto divokovácie z rastliny v malých záhrade. I just take a little bit at a time, enough for my meal, and then I let the others grow. Interesting little fact, wild onion has a mechanism from people harvesting the root. When you tug on this, it releases the greens. So just like a lizard tail, if you pull a lizard tail, the lizard just runs away. Same with this. Because the plant doesn't want you to eat that. So in order to get this, you have to... You're doing great. Thank you. I don't think so. It's very hard to interpret, especially for a long time. <laughs> no, you can translate. No, okay. As we say, it's difficult to translate for a long time. How did you see it? Andrew, it was better. No, no. I gave you a lot of time to translate these cards. But it's more qualitative than it is better than it is better than it is better than it is better than it is. Lebo to, to, čom tu rozprávame, napriek tomu, že sa tým zapodievam, tak mnohé tie rastliny nepoznám ani latinsky, ani anglicky, ani slovensky. Pre, preto Filip si zobral tú ťažšiu časť prekladu, kde naozaj proste ideme do, do odbornej technológie. Ja dúfam, že vám to až tak nestežuje ma. Rozumiem, čo hovorí. So, basically, I eat the greens. <laughs> Thanks. Elevnosti treba aj studovanie. How about this one? Somebody said it earlier. Kislička. Very good. Please notice that kislička has three leaves and they're shaped like hearts. They also have yellow flowers. Often people confuse kislička for clover. In fact, when you do a Google search for clover, it comes up like this. Both are edible, but they're not the same. Clovers have a big flower. Kislička has small flower. And then the leaves, which grow in a similar pattern, look nothing alike when you look close. This is a, I show this because it's a good example. When you first start foraging, it's like a wall of green and it's intimidating. Maybe you think, how can I identify this from that? Možno si môžete myslieť, ako môžem odlišiť tú drastnú od tej ďalšej. But you look a little closer and you realize it's not that difficult. Stačí sa pozrieť troška bližšie a zistíte, že to nie je také obťažné. You know, clover has three leaves and a flower like that. Ďateľné má tri listy, kvôli ako vidíte. And kyslíčka has three leaves and a different flower. Kyslíčka má tri listy a menší kvôli. Clovers are the best blood purifiers. Ďateľné je najlepší čistič krvi. So if you have tumors, cysts, goiters, you, you make smoothies out of clover. You can make it out of the flower, the leaves, it doesn't matter. And all, all clovers are in the pea family. So they have a nice taste. You can even juice them if you want. And clovers literally grow everywhere. Let's see what happened here. Okay, so this is a wild edible comics. 
But maybe they don't work as well uh, in, in Slovak. This is a dandy lion. Also, we have African lion, mountain lion, dandy lion. <laughs> this is perhaps the most underappreciated weed. Dandelions are so amazing. Not only do they cleanse your liver, your kidneys, your pancreas, your gallbladder. The flowers actually promote emotional satisfaction. They boost your mood. So in the winter time when it's cloudy and you kind of feel a little sad, you can eat a dandelion flower and you'll, you'll get that concentration of vitamin D. Some people say dandelions aren't around in the winter. Not always true. Some of them are very hardy. Yeah. Also, another thing I like to do is I like to collect the flowers and I like to put them in honey. And the honey preserves the flowers. And it makes dandelion jam. So then in the winter time, I spread the jam on crackers or, or bread or whatever, eat it straight. And I get vital vitamins that aren't around in the winter. Dandelions also have a very easy identifying characteristic and it has to do with the, the leaf. There are over uh, 300 different types of dandelions. All of them are edible. Dandelions are part of the uh, sunflower family, which is the largest family of plants. There are no poisonous sunflower relatives. But still, there's something that's very unique to dandelions. This uh, stem is smooth. So if you, if you want to know what a true dandelion is, you pick a leaf, flip it around, and if the stem is smooth, it's a dandelion. Here's an example. This is not dandelion. This is cat's ear. When you look at this one, it kind of looks like a dandelion. The flowers kind of look like dandelions. This is dandelion, this is not. But when you look closely at the stem, it's very hairy. Like a cat's ears. So this plant is edible. But you don't want to eat it in a salad, it's not pleasant. You could blend it in a smoothie. You could throw it in a soup. The great wild edible to know about. Here's some more humor. Uh, this says... If you really want to piss off your neighbors, blow the dandelions into their yard. <laughs> okay, here we go. Plantain. This is even better than sorrel for your skin. Uh, my friend Lucy, I got her to, to put a plantain skin mask on. You do uh, plantain, oats and honey in the Vitamix. 
Skoro cel, med a... Honey. A ostane ločky, ločky v Ritomixe. You could do a little coconut oil too. Možete pridať troška kokosového oleja tiež. And, and if you need a little bit of water. A treba troška vody. And then you put it on your face, your skin. Dáte si to na tvár, na vašu pokošku. And it's the best cosmetic you'll ever, you'll ever try. Je to najlepšia kozmetika, ako si kedy vyskúšam. This plant can literally save your life. Táto rastná je doslova zachrániť vaš život. You get stung by a bee, you don't know what to do, it starts to swell. Keď vás poštikne včela, neviete, čo robiť, začne to opúchať. You take some of the plant, you chew it up, and then you just apply it straight onto your skin. Zoberte si skoro celý list, požívajte ho a dajte to priamo na miesto, kde odpoštipala čela. And instantly the pain and swelling go away. A bolest mi, bolest mi z nimi. It also tastes quite nice. Tiež dobre chutí. And it's rich in protein. A je bohatá na proteíny. And it's really easy to identify because it has long veins and they have threads in the veins. A je jednoducho identifikovateľná. Má niekoľko žiliek na liste a tie žilky majú a, také nitky v sebe. So you have... Uh, Very easy to identify veins and then you rip the leaf and there's there's threads in there. Takže mám tie veľmi ľahko identifikovateľné líza, pokiaľ sú tam žilky a tie žilky, keď uh, list otrhnete, tak majú sebe nitky. This right here is broad big leaf plantain and this is a narrow leaf plantain. Tam je obrovský veľký uh, list s korocemu a tam je tenký list korocemu. It doesn't matter, they look different but they still have the same identifying characteristics. To nie je dôležité, obidove sú skoroca, pretože majú rovnakú uh, identifikačnú črtu. A do you guys know psyllium husk? Pozná you know? niekto psyllium husk? No, in the US, you, you know? Yeah. It's like a supplement that they use for, um, to get good bowel movements, to go to the bathroom well. Je to dobrý doplnok, pre, keď idete pre tým, ako idete. It's a product of plantain. Je to produkt vytvorený so skorocom. Uh, the seeds, there's... Each, each plantain plant has up to 20,000 seeds. And the seeds have a lot of husk. And that husk is really good for digestion and going to the bathroom. Husk is like uh, the coating of grain. But, yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't know what is husk. You know this one? Portulaka zeleninova. Okay, so the next couple plants are problematic for bio farmers. These plants have adopt, adapted to living near humans. They like when humans dig. So these plants often grow in gardens or uh, places where soil has been turned. Radi vyrastajú na záhradách alebo na pôdach, ktoré boli vlastne nejaké prezušené. And this is the best medicine for heart health. Toto je najlepšia medicína na srdcové zdravie, pre srdcové zdravie. It's the most amount of uh, omega 3s that you'll get in your diet. Obsahuje najväčšie množstvo omega 3 nenasytení kyselín. From a plant. Čo týka rastlín. It also has a natural sodium. Má tiež prírodný sodík. And what we found with athletes is that when they get natural sodium that's not salt, it's good for their joints. And it's a plant that grows along the, the other vegetables along the ground. In my hometown, I went and talked to several local farmers. <laughs> and I said, uh, do you have a purse lane problem? They said, a- absolutely. I said, can I buy some from you? <laughs> They said, how much? I said, 10 kilos. They said, oh, that's too much. Just come and get it for free. So you clean my garden, you get it for free, everybody wins. And so I started doing that. And I stopped buying their greens. And that didn't work for them, so now they sell this at the farmer's market. 
But now I don't mind paying for it because it's, you know, it's it's easy. So that's a good, you know, uh, it's a good idea to meet some of your farmers and see if they have this on their farm. Also, how many people farm? Like how many people grow vegetables? That's one of the best places to look for wild edibles. Because most of the weeds that come up are edible. And when you go to throw those weeds away, you're just throwing away free food. That's more nutritious than what you're trying to grow. So conduct this experiment. Let some of your weeds grow and see what they turn into. And I bet it'll be this and this. How in Slavic? Marlik Bili. Okay, I'll leave that one to you. <laughs> Marlik? Marlik. This is wild spinach. Do you guys, have you heard of quinoa? From South America. It's the richest grain and protein. This is its relative. So when you look at quinoa growing and you see this merlik, it looks just the same. That's how uh, how things get sold to you. That's how healthy economies are made. So in South America, there's a grain we've never seen. It happens to be a healthy grain, but it's not healthier than the other ones. They take the grain from South America and bring it here and they say, this is amazing, it's superfood. We start buying lots of it, we drive the price up. The people in South America can't afford to eat their own grains. And so, I, I don't know, I, I think that's, that's not okay. So, I'm not saying you shouldn't eat quinoa, but you should eat this for sure. Because the, the greens themselves are even more nutritious than the grain. Look, I've been in the health food movement for 20 years now. Uh, a little bit less. And so I was literally around when goji berries came. <laughs> and coconut oil. And everything else that's trendy. And I'm not telling you not to eat them. But please realize that it's just food. Uh, like what's um, what's a local food that grows in here in Slovakia? Yeah, uh, yeah, just just something that's like cherries, right? Cherries. They grow here locally. Yeah. You could take cherries from Bratislava and take them to China. And say people in Bratislava are so beautiful because they eat cherries from Bratislava. And then the Chinese they won't know because they haven't been here. And they'll be like, oh. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I have my own ideas. Like, for example, you know, crop circles? That, yeah, the aliens make? Let's start collecting the wheat from crop circles and selling crop circle wheatgrass. <laughs> 20 euros a shot. 
20 rokov. 20 eur. 20 eur. Because that's uh, intergalactic energy. Pretože je to intergalaktická energia. I'm telling you. Oh, you want to. So this is, you know, this is this is what I find superfood. Toto je podľa mňa superfood. Super jedlo. Uh, super easy to identify. Úplne jednoduché identifikovať. It has dust on the leaves. Má taký prášok na listoch. And this dust uh, prevents it from getting wet. A tento prášok uh, pomáha uh, getting wet. Getting wet, so getting uh, rain water. Aby nezvodla tá rastina. Pomáha, aby sa udržal súmstvo. Udržal vodkosť. I don't know exactly why the plant does that, but it does. Sorry. So uh, if you take the leaves and you put them in water, the white dust makes the water come off. Takže pokiaľ uh, dáte ten list do vody, tak ten prášok vlastne pomáha ten list uh, udržať suchý. Vlastne tá voda nesteká. Sam sa to myslí, takže sú vodozdorné. Ten prášok chráni tú rastlinu tú vodu. That's a good identifying characteristic. Je to výborný, uh, je to výborná charakteristika čo tam za ktoré môžeme identifikovať tú rastlinu. Sometimes the dust is uh, pink. Niekedy je ten prášok ružový. Sometimes the dust is white. Niekedy je bielý. All parts are edible, great in salads, smoothies. Všetky časti sú jedlé, vynikajúce v šalátoch, smoothies. What else do I want to tell you? Hmm. Čo iné by som vám ešte o tomto povedal? Oh, uh, also, sometimes when I talk about wild edibles, people think that I only eat wild edibles. Niekedy, keď hovorím o divoko rastúcich jedlých rastná, ľudia si myslí, že jem len tie. And that's not true. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my diet. To však nie je pravda, poviem niečo o mojom dálničku. So in the summer months, from April until October, takže letný mesiac od apríla do oktober, When plants are growing, I eat a lot of wild edibles. Keď rastný, rastú, jem veľa dielok, rastú, And I hugely offset the costs of going to the grocery store. Uh, uh, sorry? And I hugely save on gro- going to the grocery store. Hey, do But when wild edibles don't grow, I still go to the store. Ale tam I eat lots of salads and smoothies. Je veľa šalátov, smoothies. Uh, for many years, I was only raw food. Niekoľko rokov som len na surovej strave. Now I eat a little bit of cooked food, about 80% raw. Troška dá aj varené, ale je to tých 80% raw food. And I find that that helps me eat less nuts. Uh, which uh, kind of just, I feel better. Je menej orechov. Um, čo, no to také čoho sa cíti lepšie. So I, I don't want to make it seem like I just don't go to the store altogether and I only drink smoothies. Nechce vyzerať ako nikto, že nechodí do obchodu a pije len smutí. In fact, there are, are ways in which I appreciate the store. Je to dôvod, prečo ocenujú vlastne také obchody. And uh, quinoa and oats is actually one of those good examples. Which one? Quinoa and oats. Uh, is a good example why I like the store. Quinoa a ovsené ločky sú napríklad taký jeden príklad, kvôli ktorým chodí do obchodu. One summer I grew quinoa and I decided I'd make my own. Uh, raz som si kúpil kinova a rozhodol som, že si urobím vlastnú. And so then when I went to seed, I collected all the seeds. Keď uh, vlastne rozkvitli. Uh, ko- And then, uh, so how you, uh, the ancient way of collecting, uh, the, of shelling the seeds Staradána, spôsob, ako, uh, zbierať, is kino. to go like this and, and the seed is heavy so it'll drop and a light breeze will blow the rest away. Uh, Presype to cez ruky a After six hours, I had less than a handful. <laughs> so in that respect, when I do choose to eat quinoa or oats or rice or whatever, it's nice that it's available in the store. <laughs> But all the other times I eat the greens. <laughs> okay, a few more plants. Common mallow. This is like a really good hearty green and it's a great vegetable. Do you have okra here? Okra, no, but we know what is it. Okay. It's like Indian food. Yes, okra is Indian food, yeah? This is the closest okra relative in the wild. 
All of this uh, tastes like okra. It also makes for a really good smoothie green. Have you ever made a smoothie and then it separates and looks very gross? This green will prevent it from doing that. It, uh, it helps bind stuff. It helps bind ingredients in a smoothie. Yeah. And the best way to identify it is by its little fruits. Which are, which are very tiny and tasty and, and taste great. Here's another sunflower relative. These flowers are everywhere. All sunflowers are edible. I realize this is a lot of information, but even if you learn a few plants, you did good today. So the, the leaves or the petals are edible, throw them in salads. And the greens taste kind of like rucola, like arugula. And so they are very nice in salad. And this one is like the king of wild edibles. And here in Bratislava you have lots and lots and lots of this. The reason nettle stings is because it has these very sharp thorns. What is the remedy for nettle sting? It's nettle's juice. So if you ever get stung on the hand, all you have to do is get a little juice, put it on the hand, it instantly goes away. That's why if you're a little crazy like me and you eat the plant, it stings your tongue, but the sting instantly goes away. So it's like a very exciting meal. <laughs> <laughs> the best way to eat it though is with a blender. In Oregon where I live I'm not as lucky so I actually have to garden nettles. And then a couple times a week I wake up, I have my blender in one hand. And yeah, and I have, see, he's better than me. Nožnice, yeah. So I cut them straight into the blender. I don't even touch them. Then I blend them with fruit and I have the world's best smoothie. That's only second best to Andres. <laughs> when the plant is small, it's okay to use all of it. As the plant grows tall, the bottom leaves get very big and fibrous. So then you want to use the growing parts, the top of the plant. If you want to eat nettles without a blender, you can do it. Nettles, uh, they have leaves, and under the leaves, the thorns are all faced in one direction. So if you take the leaf and you roll it, all the thorns, all the, the spines will lay flat. And they won't sting you. Here's another comic. So it's Adam and Eve. 
To je Adam a Eva. And Adam knew that Eve was mad because instead of a fig leaf she put nettles in his drawer. Uh, Adam <laughs> That is the bulk of what I wanted to talk to you guys today about. Uh, how many people are going tomorrow? Three, four. Okay. 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 Time. Eleven o'clock. Ono bude, budeme ten rozbor a to učenie striedať aj normálnu prechádzku, lebo no, tých informácií proste, proste aj teraz videli, že je strašne veľa. Ale dôležité, že ak aspoň 10% si z toho zapamätáme, tak to už veľký So, we'll learn more about this stuff tomorrow. Takže o tomto sa zájde naučíme niečo viac. I want to just leave you on one last note before we an- kind of end and answer questions. Some of you are here and your loved ones back at home are a little nervous. Uh, uh, yeah. So ma- mostly it's husbands. Because the wife is here, the girlfriend's here, the husband is thinking, uh-oh. What is she going to learn? And how is my life going to change? <laughs> I learned a long time ago that food uh, has the power to unite people or separate them. <laughs> When I started eating healthy at first, uh, I thought everybody wanted to know. And so I, I'd see somebody eating a hamburger and I'd say, hey, you know, that's uh, GMO. <laughs> GMO, OMG, LOL. GMO, OMG, LOL. And then I'd tell them all the reasons why they shouldn't eat that. And surprisingly, I lost all my friends. I'd call people and say, hey, you want to hang out? And they'd say, no, I'm busy. <laughs> and similarly, I see a lot of parents, they go and they tell their kids, you need to do this. Or they come to me and they say, how do I make my kids eat healthy? <laughs> Let's not let food divide us, okay? There's already enough stuff that divides us out there. And anyway, the best way to inspire people to eat healthy is just by example. A bear, a mother bear in the wild, do you know how it teaches its child what to eat? It'll go and it'll eat plants and it'll chew them up and show the bear. So it actually eats some blueberries, lets it smell from its mouth. It even lets the cub eat from its mouth. And that's how our kids learn too. So it's not what you say, it's what you do. So if mom says, eat healthy, but if mom's drinking coffee and she's eating pizza, what is the kid learning? And so I invite you tonight when you go home and you see your loved ones, Ask them, were you nervous? <laughs> and then I want you to say, only if you feel it, I love you for who you are and what you eat. 
And may, to, maybe to tell them that I learned about some smoothies that I want to try or some wild edibles. But I don't expect you to do anything. If you want to support me, have a smoothie with me from time to time. Or maybe we can go hiking together and I can show you what I learned. And then see what happens. And send me an email. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention. And I think I went an hour over. <laughs> so um, I'm going to let you go and if you have questions, just come up to me. And also, I just want to do a little uh, promotion for myself. Uh, this is my newest movie about athletes. Nobody has this yet. I literally got it a week before I left and then I didn't have time to mail it to anyone in America. And it has Russian subtitles, if that helps. So that's powered by green smoothies. That's more wild edible stuff where I talk about plants. And if you want green smoothie recipes, it's this one. Um, and, and they're all, I discounted them, they're 10 euros a piece. And I really hope I don't have to take them back. <laughs> I, I think you can pay me or Andre or whatever. And... <laughs> and if you want to give me a hug and just say hello after, I really would appreciate that. Thanks again for your attention. Ďakujem ešte raz za vašu pozornosť.